Shalom. This is your brother Yahweh Ah. Come again with another lesson. All right. Through the exhortation, through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh uh, Shah. The lesson, uh, the name of this video will be called America is not preparing you for World War Three. All right. America, the country you so love, talking to the wicked, is not preparing you for World War Three. All right. Let's give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Acha Kodash, which is the true Heavenly Father in His Son's name, which the, which today the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ in the pale of the Hebrew tongue. I'd like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, all right, who who, uh, who we learned this from through the power of Spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. And also, a citation to the head of my account, Chazak, who I teach under, and a camp of men in Israel here in Greenville, South Carolina. And Shalom to the uh, Akam Nakwa, the man and woman who believes in our testimonies. All right, believes in heaven, uh, Heavenly Father names, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and the speckled bird, all right, who believes, who's in the land of the uh, heathen, who looks at the heathen, all right, who believes. In the uh, names of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, being sincere with faith, all right, keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, and giving their all through the Spirit to, uh, you know, bring forth the ministry and the gospel in these last days. Without further ado, I have a video about you know this Jake speaking you know, on how he felt, you know, when these last days, you know, a lot of men are going to be scared. All right. You know, a lot of pride that's that's, you know, that's that's going up now is going to seep back down, you know, when this war starts. So let's pay attention. Let me get some precepts along the way. We're going to dig right on into it, man. I'm sitting here. OK, guys. OK. It's twenty twenty four. And there's too much going on right now. I'm sitting here right now and my heart is pumping. It's going boom, 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 boom. My heart is going crazy right now. Um, I think what just happened, and this is my, this is only speculation, but we will find out really soon. I think what just happened in Yemen could potentially be the start of World War Three. On the screen will be an article showing that the United States have just attacked, have just jumped in to something major. What does that mean for me? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for our families here in America? Things are already high in this country as far as inflation, right? When a war happens, gasoline prices spike. When gasoline prices spike, so do all of the goods in our country. And why is that? Everything that you have in your home, everything that you eat, everything that you do, everything that you think about at some point was on a, a truck, a big rig. So when the prices of diesel goes up due to war, what do you think happens to all of the shipping prices for everything that we love to consume here in this country? My heart is beating because there are so many families that are already in a bad situation as far as they can't afford a $500 emergency. And this government, this country knows what they need to do in order to prevent total chaos, but they are holding on to it. Literally holding on to something major right now, which is a UBI, a universal basic income, which if this thing escalates even, even further, I believe they will roll this out just like that. Mark my word. But could this be the start 
of World War III. You guys let me know in the comments. Peace and love, and stay safe out there. Deuces. Now, you know, you see Jake talking about UBI, all right? Well, that UBI, uh, it stands for University, Universal Basic Income, and I looked it up. Um, and go back to it. Go back to it. Uh, let me see if I still got it on here. Um, yeah. All right. And it says universal basic income says universal basic income UBI is a social welfare proposal in which all citizens a of a given population so it's given to certain people it ain't given to everybody it says of a citizen of, of a given population regularly receive a minimum income in form of an uh I guess allowance I'm not gonna really go into that website but uh let me see, just for edification, given into a proposal which all citizens given to receive a minimal income in the form of unconditional transfer payment without a mess test or need to work. In contrast, a guaranteed minimal income is paid only to those who do not already receive an income that is enough to live on. It says that I, a UBI will be received independently of any other income if the level is sufficient to meet a person's basic needs or above poverty line. So, yeah, that's what it stands for. But does America has it? <laughs> it says, is there a UBI in America in US United States of America? While there are no federal UBI plans. <laughs> so when you get a job, what's the first person who take your money? The federal and the state. So the federal taking all your money. So if something go wrong, the federal ain't even got a plan where they're gonna back you up to help you when war comes out. It says a number of U.S. citizens have taken it upon themselves to trail the plan. So, you know, regardless of what the people do, who owns the money? <laughs> and after the, the money, there's a dollar bill already going away. What 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 currency is America going to go off of? All right. That's something you have to understand. Or something you have to pay attention to. OK. You know, all this is going to be famine. It's going to be all kind of chaos. It's going to be all kind of shit. That's why you see all these people, what, building bunkers, all right, closing down the stores. You don't see no more big bylaws. You don't see no more uh, shit. Food line is going out. Shit, you don't see a lot of, uh, uh, what's that, stores, man. They got all, all the stuff and groceries and stuff in there. You don't see a whole lot of uh, ingles either, man. They probably ain't even got no Ingles in certain areas now. I probably seen one Ingles in my state. Probably just like two or three, man. So like you got all these big um big businesses closing down, man. You got the mall closing down the stores. Malls stores are getting shorter. Malls are getting shut down, man. And you people out here, out here, having so much fun, and this place is not even warning you. But guess what? America ain't warning you, but the prophets has been warning you for a long time. And you people has disregarded the word of the Lord, man. So what's going to happen to you now? Let's get to it. To those who don't hearken to the prophets of the Lord. All right. You will be punished, man. You will go through hardships. Let's get some scriptures. All right. This is, uh, let me go ahead and put up second address, man. Second address, chapter 15 and verse 6. 
Well, let's go to verse 5. And it reads, verse 5. Uh, Behold, says the Lord, Yahweh, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. See that? It says, For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So there ain't no turning of no prayers that's going to stop what's going to happen. No matter how severe the death toll may be or how fatal the death has been, um, you know, work in the works of. There's nothing that's going to stop the Heavenly Father, man, for carrying out his judgment. Great judgment is coming to America. Babylon the great. As the Bible refers it. So there ain't going to be no, well, let's pray and all get together. You know how you Christians love to do, love to meet up at the church and hold hands and try to think that you're going to have a good, great prayer that it could cancel out prophecy. And you're going to be a fucking fool to believe that lie. You know, that, that vain opinion in the back of your mind because the Lord ain't listening to you, man. Why are you calling on the wrong name of the Heavenly Father? You calling on the uh, uh the name the the so called white man gave you, all right? Which is his name in the Bible is Esau Edom, which is the wicked the Bible speaks of, who is the counterpart of the devil man, the deceiver, all right, of Satan, all right. So you you already following the wrong wrong thing. You ain't supposed to be praying together or in no building. The Bible speaks of that too. So all all the works of Christianity is 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 gonna be destroyed, man. It's already in the works of the Lord is destroying it, and the Lord is gonna tear that shit up, man, because it's it's not the truth. You Christians are gonna be the most blindsided idiots when this go down, because you refuse to hearken to the men, of, the true men of the Lord, man. The prophets that's on the highways and byways breaking down the scriptures. All right. And everybody don't have to break down. Only the ones who are speak, receiving the Holy Spirit. OK, <clears throat> let me get first Thessalonians as well, man, because that's going to hit on a lot. Five and two, it says first Thessalonians chapter five and verse two and three, it says for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You know, when this war hits, man. This shit ain't going to be like um, a warning to you, a broadcast for a week from now on where, you know, you're going to be preparing yourself for a week. Man, this shit going to happen in your sleep. This shit going to happen at your job, on your way home or on the way to work or while you out and about getting groceries or whatever the hell you may be doing. Taking a shit. It don't matter. It's going to be in an unexpected time, man, on an unexpected time. Where destruction is going to come upon this place, man. Rather you ready or not. Okay. This is why the, the men of the Lord. All right. We pray. All right. We we meditate. All right. We, we, we do what we can. Try to keep the Sabbath the best way we can. Try to keep the holy days the best we can. All right. Without Esau's work. Okay. And also. Making sure we keep the dietary law. Following the law, statutes, commandments, man, showing the that we do love the Heavenly Father, okay? That we do love our our, our, our power, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh But those who do not do those things, and I'm talking about the Israelites, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, who are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, all right, that the Bible speaks of, that you reference to, only ones that reference to in the Scriptures, man. It's time for you to come out of your sleep, all right, out of your slumber, out of this mirth of America with this dream of you have to have it all and everything belongs to you. You can do whatever you want to do. This place is finna burn, man. This place is the same place as Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt, the same place as uh, 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 when Nebuchadnezzar was living, Okay. Having having all to himself, man. You know, 
wanting to wanting to reap everything. This is the spirit of Esau. This is the spirit of a wicked of, of the wicked. To have everything. To have everything at your fingertips. That's not that's not that's not the spirit of the Heavenly Father, man. You're trying to be you're trying to be in control of your of your life. The only pain, only person that's in control of your life is the Heavenly Father. But it's you're deceived through what? By the way of America, man. America has has groomed you to believe a lie that you have a way to survive off money. That money is everything. All right. And you love to you love to, to, to have it. So let's let's go to verse three. And this is why I speak on these things, because with that mindset, you are going to have no uh, awareness of what's going to happen. Man, You're going to be stuck in your ways. You're going to be what's called uh, a bug out. You're going to be, you know, a reprobate, man. Verse three and first Thessalonians chapter five. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. You know, you're going to be in so much fear and so much, you know, you're going to you're not you're going to be so scared. You're not going to know what to do. You're going to freeze up. And that's how you men going to be, man. You know, you men are going to freeze up as well, man. You're not going to know what to do. You thugs, you, you want to be gangsters, you know it all. You brainiac nerds who 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 believes in science and universe and all these other uh, false deity beliefs, fornications of all kind of spirituality shit that has nothing to do with the Lord. You're going to be caught up in your own ways when the death and destruction is coming upon you. The plague is going to be sent to you. You're going to be marked for death because you didn't turn to the Heavenly Father. You didn't repent. You didn't convert when you had the chance. You didn't seek him when you had time. So, hey, you got what you asked for. All right. Go back to second Edris. Chapter 15. And I'm going to go to 14. 14. And it reads, says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction drive not, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings, nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And what is this statement, man? It, what is this statement is, is that when everything, what this man was talking about inflation and, and you know, people living hard already. And when the war starts, it's going to be more and more, you know, saying of cost of living. People are going to start invading stores, man. People are going to start invading their neighbors, you know, and spoiling their houses as it goes into it, man. It says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. All those immigrants that came and that was verse 17, the second age is 15. All right. It says, you know. A man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able to. You immigrants who's came in over here trying to have a good life, running from your country. The Lord sent you over here to be destroyed, man, because you've been marked for death. All right. You're going to try to go back to your country and you ain't going to be able to. All right. You're going to be stuck over here. They're not going to let you back in in your country. They're not going to let you flood back in there when 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 when, when destruction comes in there. No, nah, you wanted to be over here, man. But it was sin over here, man. The spirit of the Lord, he had put the spirit on you to come over here, man. Because your judgment has to play out. It says, because, it says for because their pride, the city shall be troubled. And the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. You see that? Men shaking, talking about how, how he scared and how he's trembling or whatever. But hey, this is in the scriptures, man. This is in this Bible, man. The Bible speaks of these times that are coming. It speaks of how men are going to be afraid. It speaks of how men are going to react to the war, man. And how they're going to be in the state of living is going to be. And the, and the prophecy has been warning you of these things, man. Okay? We're not on the highways and byways to, for, 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 for entertainment. We're on the highways and byways because we're commanded to be on the highways and byways. Okay? We're commanded to serve the Heavenly Father. For he put his spirit on us to give the warning, all right, to warn our people, man, okay, to warn our people, all right, 
to turn back. So they make so they might have salvation, man. This is salvation for to the kingdom, man, that we'll be saved out of these troubles of Jacob's trouble. Because Jacob's trouble is on the way. It's gonna be a time that has never been before, man. Great destruction, great death, okay? All right, and it's not gonna be no funerals for you people, man. You're not gonna have time to gather your loved ones. You're not gonna have time to uh, stop by and tell somebody you love them before you go, before it's their time to go. Okay. Though these 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 are these times that are, are are aspiring minute by minute. Okay. <clears throat> it says in verse nineteen, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. Best shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So there you have it, man. You have it. So what 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 what's confusing when it's all right here in the scriptures, man? Okay? You already heard it. It's written. So what you should be doing? You should be you should be coming to the prophets, man. You should be asking questions. You should be Repenting, okay? You should turn away from all the things of the world, all right? No matter how hard you work to get it, you should be able to throw those things away because they're going to mean nothing, okay? For so we lay our treasures up in heaven. This wisdom, knowledge, and truth is the true treasure, man. It's worth more than diamonds and gold. It's worth more than the precious stones in the, uh, of this world, man, Okay? The Heavenly Father has laid up his treasure for us in his kingdom. All right. And we know that we we know that he's doing that. We believe which we truly believe. All right. Well, I truly believe that. And I truly believe the word, the word of the Bible is true. All right. I have faith that, you know, that I'll be able to hope for that. That I'll be able to hope for one third. All right. And I'll, and I pray that other brothers that I know are part of it, too, that I know that. Believe, man. So, hey, <clears throat> these times are very, very serious. Very, very serious. It's not no hee hee ha ha time. It's not no time to be out here trying to go on vacation. It's not no time to be out here trying to play around and and, and be a hoe or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Do whatever y'all want to do. They ain't got nothing to do with the Heavenly Father. This is the time where you need to, you know, wash your hands, man. And, and ask for forgiveness. Hope that the Lord will forgive you and give it and put it and ask for the your spirit to be quickened with the word. Let me get a uh, second Andrews fifteen fourteen. I'll we'll read on that. I'm gonna go to chapter sixteen, and I'm gonna get to uh, from the top. It says, "Will be to the Bab will be unto thee Babylon and Asia, will be unto thee Egypt and Syria." All right. And we see all these countries over there in those lands that's at war. All right. Babylon, which is America, Asia, China. All right. You got Russia over there. You got Yemen at war. All right. You got all these Iranian countries starting to go to war as well. Okay. In verse two, it says, gird up yourselves with clothes of sack and hair. Be well, your children, and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and who is he that may drive them away? It says, and many is as may any man drive, may any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood, or may any man, it's a lot, or may anyone quench the fire of and stumble. When it has begun to burn, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Okay, and we know the Lord made these archers, man. He made, he made these archers, and I think Isaiah, um, in in chapter fifty uh, four, I believe, or fifty three, where it talks about the Lord has made the uh, he has made the the western in the in the uh. Or if we paraphrase, he has made the uh, he has made the men to create these uh with the coals and and, and the uh 
man, what's that? What's that scripture? Is, man, but you know, I can't really think about it. So, but the Lord has has made, He has put the Spirit on certain men to make these weapons, man, of mass destruction, and they're not going to miss, man. All right, no, there's no turning away these these missiles. There's no no defense system. There's nothing. It says, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? All right, these are plagues, man. These missiles, these wars, these are plagues, man. All plagues are are of death and destruction. It says, a fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder. And who shall not be afraid? I still get afraid of hearing thunders, man. It says this. It says uh, verse eleven: The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at His presence? See, look, man. These missiles gonna fall on y'all. Y'all gonna turn straight to dust. All right. All you scoffers out there, all you people who are talking about the men of Israel. All right. All right. The 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 the, the man who 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 claims to be the man of the Lord. All right, who believes in Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh Shah? All right, who stand in faith, who prophesies day in, day out, week in, and week out, week in, week out, season in, season out of season. All these things, man. Y'all come and scoff us. You say what you want to say about us, but the Lord has cut records of what you said. All right, and you're gonna have to pay for what you said, man. You're gonna have to pay for what you've done. You have to pay for what for what you believe about us in the wicked way, in the manner, man, of fashion, of how you how you have put in your thoughts for evil, all right, against the men of the Lord. The Lord is, is going to repay you with that with those missiles. Verse twelve says, "The earth quake quaketh and defout and foundations thereof." All right, it's going to be earthquakes. Going to be those those nuclear missiles going to cause the Titanic plates to shift, man. It's going to cause the Titanic plates, which is the very crest of the earth, bro, to to move out of its form. There's gonna be it's gonna be continents moving out of their form, bro. This is this is gonna be something the world has never seen, and it's all gonna be done, bro, under an hour. <laughs> so there is no escape for you, man. There is no escape for any man, any woman, or anything. The Lord has already got it set. There ain't nobody leaving, man. All those who's going to be destroyed are going to be destroyed. And all those who's going to be saved in the chariots, all right, are going to be saved. Okay. The earth, it says in verse 12 again, second edge 16, the earth quaketh and the foundation thereof. The seas arises up with waves from the deep. It's going to be tsunamis along with the earthquakes, man. You know, you seen the movie 2012 when those, when the ground was going up and the plane was, Literally flying under the ground because the, the the ground rised up through through the destruction of of earthquakes, man. All right, the Titanic plates shifting out of its spots, moving to other areas. The it causes oceans to rise, man. So you're gonna see that people who want these bunkers, man, your ass is gonna be smushed with the Titanic plates. You gonna you gonna think you're safe, and the Lord is gonna have those Titanic plates to shift and squish your ass, man. You're going to be somewhere where you, you thought you can escape, but you just buried your own damn self. And this is going to be, this is this is how stupid you people are who think you can escape the, the power of the Lord, man. You're going to bury your fucking self. <laughs> Excuse my language, but you're going to be, you're going to be confounded, man. All right. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof the sea arises up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled. And the Lord, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord, and before the glory of His power. You see that man. It says in verse thirteen, for strong is His right hand that beneath the bow. What bow, man? Talking about those archers, man. Those missiles. Okay, it says His arrows that He shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. And what is these things? Don't these missiles travel across the world, around the world to get to their destination, going up and going around? These are talking about the spirit. It's, it's not it's, it's the Bible is explaining the IBC missiles, nuclear war. OK, 
He says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. You see that? This is talking about great destruction, man. There is no escaping the Lord. And I hope all is edifying. He said, It's time to repent, man. And call upon the name of Yahweh Shah.